On this day in 1966, 16-year-old George Connolly entertained the fans with a keepy uppy display at half-time as Celtic beat Dynamo Kiev 3-0 in the European Cup Winners' Cup. 1965-66 was the first season the Soviet Union had allowed their teams to play in European club competition and the great Dynamo Kiev team of the mid-60s was determined to make a mark in the European Cup Winners' Cup. Their coach, Viktor Maslov, was a tactical innovator and is credited with inventing the pressing game as well as the 4-4-2 formation. They went on to win the Soviet Championship three years in a row from 1965-66 to 1967-68. Both teams were missing key players, with Billy McNeil injured and replaced by John Cushley, while Dynamo lost their star player, Joseph Sabo, to a training injury at Celtic Park the day before. The Evening Times reported on the 11th of January 1966, Training with the full-time players this morning was right back Jim Craig, the Glasgow University student, who usually trains with the part-timers in the evenings. Wearing an all-green strip, Celtic lined up, Simpson, Craig, Gemmell, Murdoch, Cushley, Clark, Johnston, Gallagher, McBride, Chalmers, Hughes. Celtic endured a frustrating first 45 minutes against a well-drilled Kiev side. Raymond Jacobs wrote in the Glasgow Herald of the 13th of January 1966, There were holes in plenty to pick in Celtic's performance. A lack of sharpness in the middle of the attack was evident and Hughes came effectively into the game only when it was there to be won. Gemmell, Murdoch and Johnston lent most penetration and strength to the attack. The set-piece tactics at free kicks confused Celtic as much as they bewildered me. Tommy Gemmell opened the scoring on 27 minutes with a long-range shot that caught the keeper napping. The Glasgow Herald reported, the ball ran loose to Gemmell, who shot from 35 yards, Banikov, going to his left, apparently had covered. On the way to goal, the ball must have been deflected on the turf, for it straightened out and rolled into the net. The match is most famous for the half-time entertainment, with 16-year-old George Connolly performing a dazzling keepy uppy routine for the amazed 64,000 crowd and also a shoot-in against the newly signed goalkeeper, the unfortunately named Bent Martin, who never quite made it at Celtic, and at the end of the year left for Dunfermline Athletic, with whom he won the Scottish Cup in 1968. Connolly described it in his autobiography, Celtic's Lost Legend, written with Brian Cooney. I walked onto the park and into the centre circle. From there, I visited both ends, returned to the middle, went over to what was then the jungle and went back to the stands. Frank Kearney, one of the Celtic backroom staff, told me that I should have walked right off at the main stand, at which point I would have got a standing ovation. But I didn't do that. People started laughing when I turned back again and walked around the centre circle. I didn't know what to do, but then Bent Martin came out of the tunnel, so I just stopped and went over to join the others shooting at him. Connolly's display caused almost as much of a buzz as the final score that night. After hitting the crossbar from a 25-yard free kick just before the interval, Kiev showed a marked change in their approach in the second half, disrupting the game with a series of fouls, and their right-back, Shielkov, gave away a penalty on 58 minutes when he fouled Tommy Gemmell. Raymond Jacobs wrote, they are made of stern stuff at Celtic Park though, for it was the right back who was carried off on a stretcher. Frustratingly, the chance to extend the lead was spurned by John Hughes. Ger Henderson wrote in the Evening Times on the 13th of January 1966, Big John, who has put seven spot kicks in a row in the right place, somehow managed to put this one a yard over the crossbar, and Kiev should have been in clover. But the Celtic of 1966 do not fold up in such circumstances, all 11 rolled sleeves are way up past the armpits and they became twice as dangerous. With Shiolkov back on and limping after the spot kick, Celtic pounded away at a resolute defence and captain for the night Bobby Murdoch scored on 64 minutes, the Glasgow Herald reporting, Taking a pass from Gemmell, he cut into the area and the fierceness of his right foot shot took the ball past Banikov, squeezing it into the net at the near post. 
Six minutes later, Murdoch smashed another shot against the crossbar and it was he who gave Celtic a commanding lead in the tie from close range six minutes from time. After complaining about the West German referee, Victor Maslov told the Evening Times of the 13th of January, Celtic were brilliant and Hughes, for a man of his size, showed wonderful balance and ball control. Celtic were much faster than our team and their combination was much better. Thoughts immediately turned to 1964, when Celtic took a 3-0 first leg lead to MTK Budapest in the semi-finals of the competition and lost 4-0. But this was a very different Celtic and there seemed little possibility of a repeat. They now faced a gruelling trip behind the Iron Curtain for the return, but they saw the tie out in a 1-1 draw in which Jim Craig was sent off to set up a monumental meeting with Liverpool in the semi-finals.